We're on the set. The musical episode is happening. How are you? Uh, How are you feeling? I feel like I've won a competition. Yeah? <laughs> a singing and dancing competition? Yeah. I was like, please, can I one day sing and dance in something that's really great? I'm having a time in my life. Yeah? I cannot wait for people to see this episode. I mean, what I've seen so far, it mm. is so epic, and I know you guys recorded all your own vocals. Mm -hmm. Kind of walk us through the process of what has gone into this episode. Well, it's been a long time in the planning, actually. Yeah. It's been muted around since we've done like we've done a lot of music in the show. We did some dancing in the show last season, and people are like, "Are you ever going to do a musical episode?" We always wanted to find a way to do it where it wasn't just, "Oh, we're doing a musical episode." There needed to be a reason for the music and the dancing to happen. It's fun. It's really fun. Uh, a little bit terrifying because it's you know it's it's professional dancers and big cameras and cameras they use in the NFL and and a lot of uh, you know I, I'm just it's beautifully overwhelming. Yeah. And such a big, if not our biggest episode yet. Yeah. So fun. I know I'm surrounded by professional dancers. I know it's like the closest I'm gonna have to a Beyonce moment. So I wanna make sure to get those steps in grain yeah. so that I don't even have to think about it and I could like, you know, give the camera a little sass and a little Ariana Grande hair whip. Pony, I mean this pony yeah. is so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Kaylee, our, our hair sensei, was like, you gotta go Ariana Grande. You have to. Ain't no sound but the sound of feet. Machine guns ready to go. How has the dancing and the singing been for you? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, no, no, no. Has no. it been hard or? It's been totally hard for me. It's really, really hard. This All one's of an it. amazing dance about I was going to say, I saw the twirl out there. You twirl straight into she his arm. We did a good twirl. We did a good twirl. It's been fun. Yeah? Yeah, it's been, it's been, been challenging oh, and fun. In talk a good about way. the vocals. You, you sing in this episode, right? I kind of lip sing. We this sing all song. together, yeah, on this yeah. one. On this one. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Was that scarier for you? I mean, this one's an old pro. Uh, well, it, I will say it wasn't that scary because they, uh, I don't sing my own song. Okay. So I'm just kind of lip singing, so it's, it's easier, you know. I'm a little, a little uh, scared of singing. I'm terrified of it, actually. <laughs> Where are Lucifer and God? in this point of time? Are they getting along? Oh, Do they have issues? They are. They have huge issues, which yeah. huge unresolved issues. Um, well, Lucifer certainly does with Dad, and Dad seems to be um, pretending that nothing, you know, nothing's ever been wrong and whatever, which of course winds Lucifer up. And he spends most of his time wanting his dad just to keep away from him. And then he has a sort of revelatory moment in this episode where he's like, maybe for the sake of other things in my life, I should try getting along with my dad. Are we going to get that duet, the God and the Lucifer singing moment? Uh, you might do. How does having God sort of shake things up in general? Oh my gosh, well his presence has been looming for five years. Yeah. I mean, he has been such an instrumental force of nature on our show and fans every year ask, is God coming, is God coming, is God coming? Because Lucifer has all these daddy issues. Yeah. So even though we've never met him, you definitely feel like his presence is, is there. And so you finally meet the guy who is making the devil insecure for the first time ever. Yeah. So, um, so what's so beautiful about his intro is that it's a very relatable one. So not, no one can relate to being the devil. No one can relate to, you know, having wings. Yeah. But everyone can relate to having that one person. You could be a total boss. You could be, you know, Oprah, Beyonce. And there's that one person that you just, you want their acceptance. Yeah. And for Lucifer is God. Are you ready? Hey, are you ready for this? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Do you have scenes with God? Not yet. So God is finally introduced, and he's introduced as a father when the brothers are fighting, Lucifer and Amenadon. He's like, guys, you know I like it when you, yeah, I don't like it when you fight. So that's really that's fun. That's why God gets involved in the first place? I don't know. I think he just, yeah, he's a dad. He's okay. got to come look at his kids. Yeah. So what's really fun about their first time, it's the episode where God, for the first time, becomes human. So it's really fun because I'm in a scene where he experiences having to pee for the first time, having a brain freeze from a Slurpee for the first time, 
And so the first time I see him, he's like, this is my dad. I'm like, oh my God. And he's like, thank you for your support. And I'm like, huh? But it's really fun to see God because he's been so far removed from being human. He's uh -huh. so divine and so evolved that when he goes into human form again, he's like, what is this full bladder situation? What is this brain free situation? And what is this not being able to hear everyone's thoughts? So, so it's fun. It makes him very relatable. Does Ella know that it's God? Because we've talked a little bit about her faith and how she doesn't really know that Lucifer is Lucifer. Girl, for as smart as Ella is, she clueless, she okay? She <laughs> clueless. I mean, she still thinks that Lucifer is just an unemployed actor who like clearly never gets a job. So we're this far in and she still doesn't know. She still doesn't know. She's just like, he just needs a hug. Yeah. You know what I mean? Still. And um, he's almost like an older brother. Uh -huh. She appreciates his puns. Um, and she has no idea. Oh my God, I think I even added something in where, you know, when Dennis, in, when she's like, this is my dad, I'm like, oh, adopted. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's, that's how she, so good. she's just so. Yeah, that's so clueless. Ella, by the way. So Ella. Yeah. Pose, 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 pick. How many songs do we get? I think there's like eight numbers. That's it's a big deal. Epic. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's a lot. And it's a lot to, to shoot on the same schedule that we shoot right. on anyway. Do you feel like there's a theme to all the songs? Like, are they all sort of connected? We had, there was like certain songs that came up when yeah. we knew what the situation was. And for example, the song we're doing today is like, we were desperate to get this song and get, get it cleared and be able to use it because it's so perfect. Um, and we did. That's the main thing. Like we, we started this going, oh, we, these are the songs we want to do and we probably won't get this and we probably won't get that one. So we'll have a backup. We've got all the songs we wanted. I mean, from what I've heard, I only know With about three of them. With lyric changes as well. Lyric changes? <laughs> Occasionally. Like what? Oh, I can't, no, you're, <laughs> oh, no. You won't tell us any? In the first song that Lucifer sings, he drops a very important lyric from the original song in order okay. for this song to be personal for him. What's so great about this musical episode is that every song is different. Yeah. Some songs are like Beyonce playing with her hair, you know, and you got like sex hair going. Some are almost a cappella sounding. Um, Trixie sings this beautiful, I drive like Carol. Trixie sings this beautiful, beautiful, um, almost like, thank you, this like a cappella sounding song that is just so tender, it breaks your heart. Uh, Tom, I think, does his best singing he's ever done. Wow. He was so nervous about it and he crushes it. Um, he has a duet, you know, with Dennis. I have like a sing-off kind of battle with, with Maze. And it's just, each song is so different. Um, you know, uh, DB's, uh, Linda and Amanda Dale's song is very whimsical, almost like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel in the park. Yes. So what's so beautiful about the show is that each song is so different and yet moves the story forward and you get to see our characters in a way that you've never seen. You said it moves it forward. Do you think it's a pivotal episode? I do, I do. I mean, there's Decker Star moments, there's realization moments, there's, it's it's really good, you guys. It's, it's funny, because you think musical episode and you think light and playful, yeah. but at the table read, we're in it. We're behind the curtain. And at the table read, we stopped, and then it was silent when we ended, and it was really emotional. So it's one of those things that I think singing is such a vulnerable thing to do. Yeah. So you're seeing these characters almost subconscious. You're seeing them raw. You're seeing them without their mask. Yeah. Which I think we've never really done in a show. Everyone kind of, I mean, Ella's pretty transparent, but you're seeing her most vulnerable thing in her Achilles heel, which is bad boys. So what's so great about this episode is that every musical number shows someone's really vulnerable side. Like even Chloe and, and Lucifer, they haven't danced together since the prom episode. Fans are gonna go nuts, like for their Decker Star moment to see Lauren spin into Tom and 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 have this. I mean, we even that. I think that's what they really want to do. But you know, when you really like a guy, you're like, hey, so yeah, that'd be cool if you come over. But whatever, no big deal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No one really is so transparent. So this episode shows us at our most raw vulnerable and we were freaking out okay we were going into the studio and everyone's shaking and there's a good reason to break into song it's because god's going a little schizo so and he's kind of playing puppet master he is 
He is. He's playing puppet master, and he's getting he's getting old, so stuff's getting a little janky. When I first talked to you, you mentioned that the love, the romance for Ella gets a little complicated this yes, season. Yes, yes, yes. Where is she at right now? Is there a love interest? There is a love interest, and this is probably one of, if not Ella's darkest moments. And our producer, when he he wrote the episode, um, Chris Rafferty, who's a really talented writer, he watched the show and he's like, we've never gone this dark on the show. I'm like, wait a second, you're telling me that one of the darkest moments of five years of the show is, is Ella. How do you think fans are going to feel when they watch this episode? Oh, I hope that well, they love the, it. Yeah, and I would say the people that love musical theater and musicals are going to absolutely adore it. Yeah. You know? It's been, I mean, it's, it's nice because it, there are lots of fun numbers in, this, in it, but there's also a couple of really heartfelt numbers that are like proper tear jerkers. Mm. Like emotional moments? In what way? Well, uh, in the state that our characters are in, you know, when the song comes up and, and then what the words of the song mean to that character. Um, we try to find, you know, some connection mm. rather than just being random songs. Can I brag about you for a second without giving anything away? Go on, then. So, Tom, <laughs> if you must. So Tom, Don't, yeah, go. <laughs> Tom's in a difficult place. Lucifer's in a difficult place and Tom uh, goes into song and he played it for me yesterday or the day before and I was in my trailer just, you know, crying at how beautiful the recording is and knowing the moment within the story and it just brought tears to my eyes. I mean, it's absolutely touching and gorgeous and sang so well with the correct kind of, you know, you can feel what he's feeling through your singing and it's, it's gorgeous. Aww. It's beautiful. Thanks, how do you feel hearing that? Uh, you know, no, I'm, I'm, it, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm super proud of this, this whole episode actually yeah. and the way everything's yeah. turned out. But I've, it, this particular song is something that I've wanted to do on the show for a while. It's really and we so needed good. to find the right moment and this is totally the right moment. And um, I'm just delighted with how it's turned out. Do you feel like because of the songs that we see a more vulnerable side to the characters well, in a way? I think, I mean, I would say <laughs> that definitely with Lucifer for sure, you know, because music is, is a way into people's soul a little bit yep and music that's is true. you know in Lucifer's soul and you know that's why I love that episode with Father Frank in season one because it's like these two poles apart characters and they bond over music yeah and it's an unspoken language and I think yeah it does it taps into parts of Lucifer that maybe just the spoken word doesn't yeah you mentioned your favorite part of the episode is the opening what is your favorite part of the episode well actually I don't love uh, singing and dancing but we shot something today that ended up being <laughs> oh no <laughs> Oh, I know the moment, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We shot something today that ended up being very spontaneous, but yet also very fun and ridiculous and silly. <laughs> but the thing that I think people might <laughs> like, they might, they may hate it. But if they like it, I think it's something that you never imagine Chloe doing. <laughs> so I think, you know, anyone who likes the Decker Star situation are going to have a laugh because, you it know, Chloe just really needs to I've got a feeling it relax. might be a gift moment, this.